15, verses 17 through 19. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, 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 Call Haloyam, La Abanawa, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachaha Kodash. All right, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Double honors unto the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I've learned this 100% truth, and who rules very well and oversees the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the beloved Zaquan, the elder of the men of Israel camp, the Zaquan Chazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina, and a hearty, while a healthy Shalom to Acham Wa Akwathim, you brethren and sisters who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling toward your salvation. All right, to y'all, I say shalom, and that is Hebrew for peace. This is the Ach Alaya Ban Yahawada, the brother Elijah, son of Judah, and I'm coming with a quick exhortation through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rechaha Kodash, in these last days for the edification of the elect. All right, and when I say the elect, I'm speaking in reference of the chosen Israelites as you Israelites being the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. All right, we are the Israelites according to the Bible, and this exhortation and lesson is for you. Without too much else to say, as you can see by the title of this exhortation being, we are not here to be liked. All right, let's hop right back into the scriptures, and I'll be out, Lord willing, this is edifying. This is John chapter 15 and verse 17 as it reads. It's, this is red letter, which means these are the words of our Lord Yahweh Shai as he spoke. Right. These things I command you that ye love one another. Right. And Christianity will take this scripture and they'll run with it. And they'll tell you, see, God is love. We're supposed to love, 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 love. But there, but there's no righteousness. Right. But there's no repentance there there's no true works of faith being done behind that love so according to the bible that's not true love man you know true love pursuing to the scriptures right which i have a few precepts pulled up but before we even get there uh you know we're going to deal with what true love is but matter of fact i do want to say what actually stemmed uh the spirit to have me go in this lesson i can see in the spirit i i know exactly where it came from man i was watching uh, the elder Benat uh he did a live stream earlier today. Um, and, and, I, and I forget the particular title. You can go look up his channel, uh, GMS, GMS South Carolina 08. Um, go look it up, go to his live stream lesson, and go watch it and figure out which one I'm talking about. But uh, he did a live stream not too long ago. Um, and he, he was talking about still the uh, what happened with uh, Prayer is Powerful, uh, or, or formerly known as Brother Neil. Talk, uh, talking about the rebuke he had to give Neil in regards to the comment that he left on his comment board, man, you know, and, and the way the spirit had the elder go, um, it was, it was inspirational in, in regards to the fact that it, it gave me a lesson to do, man, you know, Th this truth and, and, and the spirit that the Lord is putting upon his men and his servants, it's not going to have us light in this world on this side. We're not going to have a, a huge following and a huge fan base. And a bunch of people who just like us. Why? Because we speak the words of truth, man. Whereas this world is not set up in truth. It's set up in deceit, falsehood, lies, you know, witchcraft, sorcery, magic, you know, <laughs> the black woman, <laughs> you know. You know, th th these are the spirits and this is the, the energy and the vibration that this world operates off of, man. Confusion. Therefore, when we come speak speaking truth, it's like shining a, a bright ass light amidst a, a a world that was instilled and based in darkness, man. You know, they don't agree. Those two do not mix. When the light comes, the darkness must flee, right? When the light goes away, then darkness can abound. And that's what we see happening now. 
right? Truth, hey, is, is only uh, sealed up within the hearts and the minds of the election, the chosen Israelites. And there's particular Israelites that the Lord has placed his Holy Spirit upon, you know, the Rechach Wadash. And through the Holy Spirit, they're out here prophesying and teaching in the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and prophesying against this wicked kingdom. We know those men to be the prophets, right? Starting with the elders and apostles, a great millstone on down, whether you like it or not, man. You know, once again, we are not here to be liked, you know, and it's these words. It's this doctrine. It's how we conduct ourselves. It's how we move that that separates ourselves from the world. Right. Let's read this again, because this is exactly what our Lord Yahweh commanded us to do, to be separate from the world. This world thrives off of hate. Right. You know, all this world can can push and promote is hate. But when it comes to love, you know, they're, they're clueless to what true love actually is, man. This is John chapter 15 and verse 17 it says, these things I command you that ye love one another. And he didn't say love the whole world. He didn't say love any and everybody, no matter what they do or what they think or how they act. No, he said love one another. Right. That's that goes back to the law. That goes back to the scriptures, man. Uh, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. That tells you that how was I was what reinstilling the commandments in the hearts and in the minds of his disciples, man. Those who were disciplined and were ready and willing to be in a broken and contrite heart to follow after him, right? To take up their cross and follow him, to suffer as he suffered for righteousness sake, right? And I already have a scripture pulled, so let me grab that real quick. First Peter 1 and 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit of Yahweh Shai, unto unfeigned love of the brethren. You see this? This love doctrine is all throughout the scriptures. It's just hard for the world to understand it because it's not talking about everybody. Love does not apply to everybody. <laughs> this is why the earth is in the state that it is in right now, because love is not for everybody. There are just certain men and certain women and certain children that the Lord has just set up to be destroyed, man. They have to be. Look at the earth. Look at America. Right. Look at the laws that they're passing. Look at the legislations that they're writing, you know. The school system is through and corrupted. They're talking about even taking history out of the schools. Uh, my, my red was mentioning that to me the other day. They want to completely take out history out of the schools and take out completely the whole topic of sex ed, man. Just because of all the confusion that's come up amongst it, man. They want to lock people up if, if now if you're talking about sex, period, man. Which, that's a part of nature. <laughs> how, how can you thrive in nature and allow creation to flourish and continue to, to develop if you're not instilling and, and teaching the true principles of how life is supposed to thrive and flourish, man. You know? So this whole world has to be destroyed, man. America must go, right? This is why the scripture doesn't talk about loving America, loving the wicked doers, loving the sinners. No, the Lord says he is angry with the wicked every day. And in Isaiah chapter 66, what did the Lord say? He's going to come and lay the land desolate and destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Go and read it, right? The love that we have been set up to proclaim and to teach and prophesy of in these last days is the unfeigned love of the brethren. If you don't know who the brethren are, you know, you got a lot of learning to do, man. The brethren are fellow Israelites, right? Even Paul, the Apostle Paul, which the Christian church would like to say, oh, he was the apostle to the Gentiles. He was for everybody. No, he was the apostle to the Gentiles, but there's two different types of Gentiles. If you don't know that, that would explain your confusion, right? There's natural born Gentiles, the heathen who are not of the seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, right? The 12 tribes of Israel. And then there are also the Gentiles of Israel, the Israelites who don't know they're Israelites, who have been scattered amongst the earth, risen up and Hellenized in the customs and the cultures and the, and the, the lifestyles of these other nations. And they think that they're Gentiles, but they're really of the seed of Israel. Those are the two types of Gentiles. And Paul was the apostle sent to the, the Israelites who were living like the Gentiles. That's why Paul said, has the Lord casted away his people? Yahweh forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. <laughs> Go and read it. I believe that's what Romans 11. Go and read it. He knew who he was. He knew the Lord wasn't, you know, reneging, uh, for lack of better terms. He wasn't reneging on his promise because why? He knew he was preaching and teaching the gospel for the brethren, 
for the fellow Israelites, man. So once again, 1 Peter 1 and 22. And again, this truth is just going to hurt people's feelings. We're not here to be light. We're not here to be buddy-buddy. We're not here to just go along to get along. We're not here to men please. Oh, well, I really don't like this, man. But but I'm gonna I'm just gonna, you know, um pretend. I'm just gonna, you know, give him double honors, or I'm just gonna uh go to his camp, or I'm just gonna, you know, preach right alongside him. Yet yet in, in your mind you hate the man. You know, yet in your mind you slandering him behind his back. Yet yet uh in reality, you you're trying to rebuke him. You know? Make it make sense, man. Once again, we, the, the prophets, the men of the Hawabashim al Shah are not here to be liked. We're here to preach the truth. And either you're going to do that or you're not. Right? And yeah, the truth hurts. We knew that before we came into the truth, man. Some, some people are ugly. Some people are overweight. Some people aren't healthy. Right? That's just a, that's just a fact. That's just reality. That's life. The Lord is balanced, man. <laughs> he made beautiful and he made ugly, man. Let's just get over it. Right. If you're ugly, you're ugly. <laughs> you know, y'all get it. Y'all get the point, man. You know, got to have some comedic relief in there somewhere. But still, we're not here to be light. And we're not here to entertain anybody either, man. You got certain brothers out here with, you know, beautiful sense of humor, man. But we're not here to once again be your entertainment and for you to just click on the video and, and feel good about yourself. No, we're here to, 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 to wake ourselves up and get right, man. Yahweh Bashim Yashah is watching everything that we do. And if you aren't holding yourself to his standard, when he comes and establishes that standard in the earth, you're going to be held to it then by him. If you don't hold yourself to it, he's going to be a lot more strenuous when he comes back, man. As it says in 2nd Edris, right, it says what? They that um, hated my law, loosely paraphrasing, uh, the saints shall know it after death by pain. So no matter what, you, you want to act like you don't got to keep the commandments, that's fine. Now you just got to suffer. Now you got to get beaten and tortured and killed. Then you got to come back and still keep the commandments, <laughs> you know? But let me, you know, let me digress, man. Get back to the point. 1 Peter 1 and 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, right? Let's get that word fervently. No, let's get unfeigned first, right? Just going to show you that you can't half-ass in this thing, man. Right? Unfeigned, and I'll play it. Strong's G505, Anupakritas. Anupakritas. Anupakritas, right? Strong's G505, which means unfeigned, undisguised, sincere, you got to sincerely love the brethren, meaning you can't fake this funk. You can't fake the truth. You can't fake the spirit. Sooner or later, the Lord is going to reveal you for who you are, right? In the strong definition, it says undissembled, i.e. sincere, without dissimulation, meaning hypocrisy, right? You're not saying one thing, but then doing another thing. No, you're, you're, you're treating the next man as you would treat yourself, man. I'm talking about those who are like-minded in this truth. That's what this love is, man. That's what Yahweh B'Hashim Shai set up in the hearts and the minds of his children, the, the, the believing Israelites, man. Because believe it or not, the Israelites are, are, are many people, man. The scriptures talk about how there is the sands of the sea and the stars of the heavens, but yet the Lord is only dealing with a fraction of them. Pursuing a Zechariah 13, even in, here in America, the majority of the Israelites here in America don't get it. They don't get it. They're too busy trying to be accepted, too busy trying to be liked, too busy trying to fit in with this world and with these people that hate them, that they're missing the whole point of why we're here in the first place. We're here because we're being punished, man. This is a punishment. America is not the kingdom. America is hell, right? America is not heaven. America is hell. And until you realize that, you're not going to want to leave, right? You're not going to want to change, right? You're not going to hold yourself accountable, self-accountability, responsibility, you know, discipline, diligence, faith. You, you don't know those things are foreign to you because you have yet to begin to accept the reality of the situation that you're in. Captivity, bondage, oppression, slavery, death. The scriptures talk about how Israel has made a covenant with death and that hell are we in agreement. Got the Israelites thinking once again, America is their kingdom. America is the kingdom of, of heaven. And yeah, okay. Wait till that thermonuclear fire crown uh, comes and the Lord crowns you with flames. Let's see how, how well you want to claim this place then, man. You know? 
So John 15 and 17, these things I command you that ye love one another. And it's the gospel. How do you truly show your love for your, for your brothers? First off, you got the true doctrine, man. You got the 100% truth. Therefore, you're not being a hypocrite. You know, therefore, you're not lying. Therefore, you know how to actually remove the moat out of your brother's eye because you've already taken the moat out of your own eye. And that's not saying that we're all going to be perfect either. The elder went into that beautifully in his lesson. Matter of fact, that's kind of what it was kind of titled, man. Dear Demons, uh, we won't wear all white to the kingdom. Some, something along those lines, man. Loosely paraphrasing, you know. You know, we're not going to be fully perfect until Yahweh Shah returns, man. So don't expect us to be completely sinless either because we're not. We're walking and we're men and we're forming and shaping our path and the likeness of, of, of our elders as they are doing the same as they learn from their elders. As we have Yahweh Shah as the prime example on what it looks like to live a righteous life, you know. So that so why in the hell would you come into this thing, you know, trying to rebuke your elders as if they're not here to help you and then turn around and, and you being a hypocrite your damn self, man. You know, saying one thing but doing another thing. You're not truly sincere in this. You don't truly have that unfeigned love towards the brethren. And I'm glad that I said that because I wanted to get the word fervently in 1 Peter 1 and 22 as well. Let's get that word fervently. I'll play it. Strong's G, 1619, Ectenos. Ectenos. Uh-huh, Ectenos. Strong's G, 1619, Ectenos, which means earnestly, fervently, intensely. That, hey, I think about passion when I hear those words, man. Passionately, You know, when you're passionate for something, you can't get it off your mind. It's constantly on your mind. You're constantly thinking about it. You know, we are, man. You know, brothers, we know how we get about our woman. You know, you, you get that one, you know, you can't get it out your head. That's the only thing you're thinking about every day. I wonder what is she thinking about. I wonder if she's thinking about this. I wonder if we can go do that. You know, or whatever it may be. Brothers like, you know, um, technology. Brothers like traveling the world and seeing. Brothers like drinks. You know, games, things like that. Whatever it is, whatever your passions are for, the scriptures say your passions should be like that times 10 towards the brothers, man. Towards those who the Lord has given us to be like-minded and, and, and to be one with, man. Because we can't claim to, once again, love the Heavenly Father if we don't love the brothers, man. His children, those that he's placed his spirit uh, within to be his example in the earth. That, that, that means if Yahweh was in the earth, for example... If, or if your shot was in the earth and his spirit is in is in a particular brother, or just, matter of fact, let me say it like that. With your Shah spirit being being in a particular brother, you gotta treat that man as if he was even Yahweh Shai. Why? Not saying because he is, but because Yahweh Shai thought it fit to, to 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 have his spirit in that man. You know? Meaning what? Righteousness. That, that's you gotta treat the brother as if I was the Lord, man. How would you treat Yahweh Shai if he was here? You would treat him just like you treat that man, just like you treat that uh, apostle, just like you treat that prophet. You know, that's that's the kind of mentality you need to have, man, because the Lord takes everything that we do to each other. He takes that personally, you know, so it all goes back to your true sincerity in this thing. Do you understand the weight and, and, and the effects of what we're doing now is this is not just a trend or a fad, you know, it's not just a um. Like, my family tried to tell me when I came into the truth, they tried to tell me this was just a phase. Oh, it's just a phase. He'll get over it and come back to it. Man, hell no. Nah. <laughs> you got to be bugged out your mind, man. This is not a phase. It's not a fad. It's not a trend. This is the truth, man. The reality is real. What you hold about me on Shai Sale is going to take place in the earth and already said it was going to take place. They're happening according as it is written, you know? And so if the Lord has that passion, and that intensity, right, <laughs> and, and, and that uh, fervorance, if, if I'm saying that word right, towards, towards us in the earth, then we should have that same mentality likewise towards each other, right? Having that pure love one towards each other, not for the whole world, which once again, with us showing that love towards each other, with us wanting to see the elect of Israel saved, that's going to cause us to what? Preach the 100% truth, which this world will not like. As Yahweh Shai told us, John 15 and 18, if the world hates you, and he didn't say this just because he didn't think it was going to happen or just in case it was going to happen. No, he knew it was going to happen. John 15 and 18, if the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. So this is the condition of the battle, man. This is what we've had to count the cost and to understand before we entered into these labors, man. 
the world is going to hate us just as they hated our Lord Yahweh Shai. And if you don't know what happened to our Lord Yahweh Shai, you need to go back to the drawing board and count the cost, man. You, you truly didn't understand what this was before you entered into it, man. Yahweh Shai is the prime example on how this world is going to chew us up and spit us out, man. You know, he's the prime example. You know, and don't even get me wrong. You know, I thought twice before I said that. I don't even want to put no disrespect on how the how the, the Lord was treated by this world. But that's basically what happened, man. You know, he came and he suffered. You know, the the world treated him like he was less than nothing. He, the, the, the world treated him like he was the spittle, man. You know, so how much more us if we're coming in his stead, man? We're his ambassadors, his representatives, man, his mouthpieces. How much more us even now? When the world has gotten even more wicked by the day. As the scripture said, what? Um, that the love of many would wax cold and that iniquity would abound. That's in Matthew chapter 24. Yahweh Shai warned us and he told us of these things. So why in the hell are, are we supposed to regulate our, our language? Oh, you shouldn't say it like that. Why you got to be so harsh when you say that though? But why you got to say it like that though? Man, what to hell with you a weak, effeminate you know, the spirit of Eve, the black woman, ass niggas, man. You know, the Lord just got to destroy y'all. Again, the Lord is only looking for for his sons, man. His sons are not choir boys. Uh, pussyfooting around here. Hey, you know, if you break that commandment, the Lord is not going to like it. No, man. Like the elder said, man, you better repent or your ass going to be destroyed, man. It, 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 it's straight up to the point. The scriptures even say, by the fear of the Lord, we persuade men, you know. This is this is not a, a happy, happy, jolly, jolly, you know. <laughs> Yahweh Bashim al Shah is not a gummy bear God, you know. He's not gonna come out of the sky. Ah, my children, come, come. No, man. That's that weak, effeminate uh, Jesus Christos, man. You know, Serapis Christus, uh, Jesus the Christ. Even as that lesson, uh, El Apostle Gabar uploaded, man. You know, that's not our God, man. That's the God of these Gentiles, these heathens. That's an idol. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is a man of war, right? And Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Bashem Rechach Wadash is his name, right? As the scripture said, because the world hated Yahweh Shai, we must expect to be hated, man. And it's only worse now, you know? Now you got people, just like Yahweh Shai had Judas, now, now we got more people trying to act like they, they're with us when they've really been against us the whole time, man. Crept in unawares, you know? Trying to, to wait for the right moment to slander you, offer you up, betray you, put to death. You know, that's the situation. That's the circumstances that we also are in right now. So, no, we're not here to be light. We're here to preach the truth and to make our bodies living sacrifices for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah's name's sake. Nothing more, nothing less. Either that's what you signed up for and you knew that or, or now you know. If you don't know, now you know. Right. Scripture says in John 15 and 19, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. See, see, we know that the world, the world does have a concept of love, but it's not the same love that we teach. It's not the same love that we preach else. They would love us else. We would be received. Yeah. You, you don't have to obey the Bible. Do as thou wilt, you know, do as you want. You know, God loves you no matter what, you know, that's what that's the love that this world teaches, man. You know, that you got to be OK with the alphabet community, the transformers, the right, the uh, the, the modes, the sodomites, the, the pedophiles, you know, the world. <gasps> excuse me. The world tells you you got to love them. They're people, too. Hell no. Where is that in the scriptures, man? And all throughout the Bible, the Lord talks about how he destroyed whole civilizations of peoples for their works, for their behaviors, for their lifestyles, man. That's what the scripture said. That's what the Bible says. And once again, was the Lord loved? Was his prophets loved? Were they received? No, they were hated. The scriptures even talk about the betrayers and the murderers of the prophets. Which, you know, nine times out of ten, most of the time that was our own people. And we're going to grab that as well. Right? Let's finish this, though. John 15 and 19. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world... But I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So you see that? Yahweh Shai chose particular individuals, man. Yahweh ordained Yahweh Shai to be the shepherd of particular individual souls, to guide them unto the way of truth. 
As Yahweh Shai himself said, what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Yahweh Shai handpicked and chose who was going to be his uh, ambassadors, his representatives, his apostles, you know, to be sent forth and to preach his truth in the earth. Therefore, the world hates us, man. That's why we know we're not going to be liked. We're not set up to be a part of this world. You know, we're in it, but we're not of the world. Let's get this other scripture. Okay, I got a few. Let me say, let's grab this and then I'll grab the other one. Romans chapter 10 and verse 20. It says, but Isaiah is very bold. Uh, yeah, and verse 19 is beautiful too. But it says, but Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. And this is going into the Gentiles, man. When Yahweh Shai, you know, he went to his own first, meaning, you know, uh, the house of Judah. I mean, yeah, yeah, the house of Judah, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, as they were in the Holy Land still. You know, they were in Jerusalem when Yahweh Shai was doing his ministry, you know, and things of that nature. But they rejected the Lord, not all of them, but the, the main, you know, scribes and Scripture talk about even some of the main wicked Pharisees. Not all of the scribes and Pharisees were, were evil. You did have some that believed, you know. Uh, but the scriptures talk about how what? They were ultimately rejected the Lord and, and made sure he was crucified, man. As it was prophesied what happened, but still they rejected Yahweh Shai. The, the Israelite foreigners, foreigners, the Israelites who were scattered and they didn't really know much about their customs and heritage, they were ready to believe in the gospel. They were ready to be reminded that there is a deliverance and a salvation and a kingdom for the Israelites under our God, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. They were ready to be received. That's why Yahweh Shai said, I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. They didn't remember their culture. They didn't remember their language. They didn't remember their God. But as soon as it was mentioned unto them, what? The spirit of, of zeal popped into them. Oh, wow. You know, they were intrigued. You know, the spirit of faith began to spark in their minds and they were ready to what? Be obedient to the words of the Lord. But not Judah, ben and Benjamin, and Levi, right? Not those that um, were in the land that were rehearsing the righteous acts, so to speak. So you say, you know, but it goes on to say, this is the point, verse 21. But to Israel, he saith all day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. And that's our people, man. You know, they're the main ones we're out here preaching and teaching to repent. As we read Acts chapter 5 and verse 30 on down, we're the only ones who can repent, man. Repentance was set up for the salvation of the Israelites. You can't break a commandment you were never given. And the scriptures in Psalms 147 and the last couple of verses tell us that only Israel was given the law. So we know only Israel can sin. That's what sin is. Transgression of the law. So we understand what? <laughs> Israel are those who are, like it said, disobedient and gainsaying. They want to do any and everything outside of what the Lord commands us to do. The Lord said, do not be a part of this world. All Israel, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians can think of is, how can I make it in this world? How can I thrive in this world? How can I be accepted? How can I get cash to rule everything around me? You know, that's the nigga's mind. And that's exactly what the Lord told us not to do, right? As it says here in Acts, and I'll probably wrap it up with this, and then um, I'll check the comment board for any precepts before I end it. But it says, Acts chapter 7 and verse 51 it says, ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do ye. Yeah, and this was being spoken through the Spirit unto who? The Israelites, man. And I believe what this was Stephen. Stephen was saying this. And uh, right after this, I miss while he was even speaking, they stoned him, man. You know, but the whole point being, he was talking to his own people. Disobedient, gainsaying, stiff-necked. Uh, rebellious, resisting the Holy Spirit, which you know where the Holy Spirit comes from, obeying righteousness, having faith and works in these last days towards the name of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, you know, but as he said, you do always resist it as your fathers did. You can read all throughout the scriptures how Israel rebelled. Yeah, they would fake the funk for so long, but then they would always go and do their true heart's desire, which is whatever they wanted to do. It even says one place in the scriptures, what? <laughs> we would do as you know, they, they told the prophet, look, you go do what you're saying you want to do. And we're going to do according to our heart. Right. And according to our mind. And, and that's why the Lord is jacking them up. Even to this day, Jacob's trouble has been prophesied to come to pass in these last days, man. To where all of the Israelites are going to suffer, you know, in the two thirds of Israel, the majority 
they're going to be melted and destroyed here in America, Babylon the Great. And only a remnant, the few, the chosen of the Israelites, you know, because they were obedient, they're going to receive that salvation and deliverance, man. That's what is written, you know, because why? The majority of y'all resist the Holy Spirit. We tell you what to do. Y'all don't care, right? It's not what you feel like, right? It hurts your feelings. That's not what you want to do. So the Lord said, so be it, you know. Says in, in Acts 7 and 52, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? See, all the way back in the days of old, the prophets were being hated, man. Even by our own people, our, the prophets were being slandered and spoken evil against for their good works, man. All the way back then. So how much more now? Once again, we are not here to be liked. And if you think you're going to come into this truth so you can have a fo heap followers unto yourselves or be liked or be that next Israelite. That everybody's looking up to you want to be the next Moses or, or you know, no, man, you're done. <laughs> you, you got the game twisted, man. The Lord has said what the meek shall inherit the earth, man. You, you in the wrong ballpark, man. You know, it says which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted and they have slain them, which means killed, put to death. And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just ones. So you see that? Y'all killed the prophets, man. They were telling you that our, our Messiah, our Redeemer lives. And what y'all talking about? Oh, we got to kill these niggas. They're trying to start a rebellion. They're trying to rise up against Caesar. <laughs> you niggas got to die, man. You niggas have to die. You know? It says, and they have slain them. Just as y'all killed our Lord Yahweh Shah for preaching and teaching the truth. You know? The same way y'all murdered the other prophets. Same way you're going to seek to betray the men of the Lord in these last days. You know, the Lord has got you niggas numbered, man. Numbered to the sword. Numbered to destruction. And you're still not stopping anything. Everything that the prophets have spoken in the name of Yahweh Shem Shai, it is going to happen according as it is written. So you're not stopping anything. It's the same thing our enemies think, especially Esau Edom, right, which is the so-called self-proclaimed white men, women, and children. Even they think by killing us and doing certain things that they can hinder and stop prophecy, you got to be bugged out your mind. You got to be wicked as hell. You must not know anything about the truth to think you can you can stop the will of the heavenly father. <laughs> Boy, you crazy. <laughs> Boy, you crazy, man. You're crazy. You're insane. Literally. Right. This was written way before we were even born and created in the earth. The Lord knew what he was going to do. And everything even up to this day has happened perfectly according to the will of the Lord. Right. It says, and they have slain them which shew before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. So we know what you guys are, are rebellious off of. The law of statutes and commandments. That's ultimately what pricks y'all in your heart. Because Israel loves the idea of a kingdom. What? We get to be king? And I knew we was real royalty. Judah. Like the elder always say, man, you know. Well, I get slaves. I get... You know, a lot of people don't even, uh, you know, a lot of our people really don't, don't, don't get down with that part. The fact that we're going to have service and handmaids, you guys are weak in the spirit, man. You know, but yeah, they like the idea of, of getting out of slavery and having their own land and name and wealth and riches. But when we tell them, yeah, but nigga, you got to keep these commandments. Oh, that's when the gospel go out the window, man. You know, oh, the hell with that. I don't believe in that Bible. <laughs> I don't know no Wasaki you talking about. To start making up all crazy random names for the Lord, you know, marking themselves for judgment and death. You know, they, they lose their mind. As soon as you mention the law, statutes, and commandments, which don't get it twisted. We're not set up in these last days to be perfect, man. We're set up in these last days to rehearse the righteous acts, confess the fact that we are and, and have been doing nothing but transgressing the will of the Lord. And then returning unto him with a sincere, pure heart. Starting with what? Correcting ourselves, right? Realizing what we're doing wrong, striving our best to correct those things daily because it's not just a one day fix or you wake up and blink your eyes 10 times and do, do three little right turns and now everything's good. I'm good now. I'm righteous. I'm going to the kingdom. No, man. You know, or, or click your heels three times like Dorothy and now you in, <laughs> now you in the kingdom. No, man. No, this is a, a daily thing, man. You know, daily mortifying the deeds of the flesh, man. Daily offering up sacrifices to your help by Shemion Shah that are pleasing in his sight, man. Which includes what you do for your brother, what you do for your neighbor, man. What you what you do in response to your elders, 
and the men who've been set up to be bishops and shepherds over the flock. That's what the Lord is watching, man. You know, your behavior, your uh, hagnos and astrophe, right? The, the, your holy conversation, man. What you're what you're doing on a daily, man. That's what the Lord is considering. And then where your faith is. Do you believe when Jacob's trouble kicks off? Are you about to come out here and save yourself because you got the Glock 30? You know, or, or, or whatever. Um, I'm just saying crazy stuff now. You got you got guns and weapons and stuff, you know, so you're going to deliver yourself. No, man. Your faith should be in Yahweh Shai. As he said, what? Yahweh told us to wait ye upon him until the day that he rises up to the prey, man. You're supposed to be waiting on the Lord, not taking matters into your own hands, but having faith and a righteous and holy and a healthy fear towards Yahweh Shai, knowing that he doesn't need you to still be righteous. He can deliver... Uh, Another number of Israelites and still be considered righteous. He don't have to save you, man. He doesn't need us, right? He's doing everything for his glory. You know, we're just blessed. You know, Alvaroth is our Lord willing. We'd be a part of, of that number. We're, we're just blessed to take part in this ministry and in this labor, man. Because it's going to be a glorious thing to be spoken and, and to be heard in the days to come. That you are part of the Lord's ministry in the earth, man. Heralding, like the other Apostle Gabar likes to, to mention. You know, heralding the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai, man. You were there to what? Help prepare the way for the king. That's going to be a glorious thing to be spoken of in the days to come, man. You know, but right now it's evil spoken against. Right now it's condemned. Right now it's considered hate speech, right? It's considered wickedness. And it's not liked, which that's how you know you're doing something good. That's how you know you're doing the right thing because the world does not hate righteousness. It can't, you know. The complete polar opposite. So again, we're not here to be liked, Akyan. You know, true brothers and sisters who are working out your faith in sincerity and in truth. We're not here to be liked. Get that out of your mind. Yeah, you might have a brother and a sister that you cool with. That's that's beautiful. That's that's beautiful. That's the fruit of the spirit. But don't expect that with each and every individual who just knows that they're an Israelite. That's how that you know the scriptures say every brother or every man will utterly supplant. Lucy paraphrasing, man. This, this the world is filled with serpents. You know, demons, ghouls, you know, all types of uh, 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 wicked creatures, man, that, that will do anything but deceive you any slightest chance they can get, you know, so beware of that. Let me see if brothers got any precepts and I'm going to end it. I really don't know how to check that. Let me see. Show chat. Man. Yeah, I really don't know how to check, but I tried. Um, yeah, it's all good. So, yeah, with that. Akiyah, I'm going to go ahead and end it. Abarat is out, Lord willing. This was edifying to the sincere, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Till next time, Akiyah, wa Akwathian, brethren and sisters. I'm going to turn and face the east towards Jerusalem and end it by giving infinite and all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechaha Kodash, Wa Abad Baba, Death to the Wicked. I'm going to give double honors unto the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I've learned this 100% truth. And who rules very well and oversees the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the beloved Zaquan the elder of the men of Israel camp, the Zaquan Chazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina. And a hearty, while a healthy, shalom to you, Achian, wa Akwakim, you brethren and sisters who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling towards your salvation. Till next time, wake up, Jacob. Shalom.